everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Bob Stewart. Ooh, I'm excited today. I have with us, um, look, one of the foremost real estate coaches in our industry. And I, I just could not be more excited to have Debbie here. I'm going to bring her on in just a second and introduce her. Before I do that, this is you guys are going to have a chance today to participate a little bit. Um, there is a, a, a stump the coach section of, of the webinar today where we're going to let you guys throw out some common objections that you hear in your real estate business. And I'm going to serve them up to Debbie and she's going to bat them down. So um, in order to do that, I want everybody to find your go-to webinar control panel right now. And there's a little area on that control panel where you can ask a question. And so I want you to know where to go to do that when we have the stump the coach section here in a little bit. Why don't you guys do me a favor and check in for me, okay? And when you check in, just let's say, tell me where, uh, what was the last objection you heard in your business? Just somebody, Ian's here. Thank you, Ian, for checking in. Ooh, my mom's on, mom. Uh, she's in Hawaii, mother. All right, go back to your vacation. Uh, tell me the last objection that you came across in, in your real estate business. And this could be the same one you wanna throw out to Debbie later. Michael says it was somebody out there with price. Um, I'm just looking, I'm just browsing. Uh, if you have internet leads, you probably hear that objection every single day. So we're gonna definitely gonna talk about that one. Uh, not sure if we're gonna relist. Okay, so uh, you know, as we look through here, most of you guys have probably heard a lot of these. You know, my wife doesn't wanna take risk. We might hear that if we're trying to get them to invest in a rental or something, right? There's a lot of good ones in here. Okay, um, thank you guys. And they're still just flooding in. There's a lot of you guys that came to our webinar today. Hi, Cindy. All right, let me take a deep breath here. Today, we, we are going to talk about overcoming common real estate objections. And we're gonna do this with Debbie DeGroat. Debbie, welcome to the call. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. And you know, Bob, I can't see their objections, but you're going to feed them to me, right? Later when we oh, get ready for I'm that gonna, moment. Yeah, yeah, we are going to feed awesome. up objections left and right. So guys, uh, here's why we invited Debbie. So recently, uh, Debbie, who's, uh, Debbie, maybe go to the next slide. I think we have your resume, which doesn't fit on a slide, by the way. Uh, Debbie's and, and been... You know Oh, so give me one second here because it's not allowing me. Let me see if it's allowing me to progress the slide for some reason. There we go. Got it. All right. So here she is, 16 years in real estate. She she was a Century 21 Hall of Fame winner. Um, the thing that's not on here that I just maybe to me screams out is Debbie was Ben Kinney's first real estate coach. And she's really the, the you know, Ben came to this point in his career. And if you've never had a real estate coach, by the way, um, he came to this point in his career where he, he looked around and he just realized that most of the people that were doing large volumes of business that he wanted to get to, and really even beyond, because at that time, maybe nobody was doing 2,400 transactions like his team did last year. He knew he needed to get professional coaching. And so even this guy who at that time was probably doing 100 deals or whatever, right? He knew that to go to that next level, he needed a professional coach. Debbie was Ben Kinney's very first coach. And so today, with all this other stuff, there's another one on there, vice president of coaching for a large real estate coaching company, like one of the biggest, right? But all this stuff we see on here about Debbie is why a Ben and, and her decided to come into a partnership and form Forward Coaching, which is Ben's new coaching venture. Debbie's leading that just like she's led many coaching ventures Sorry, in the Bob, past. There. there we go. We're having a little That's internet right. issue. There you see, Ben. This will not, this is the first time Debbie and I have done a webinar together. There's gonna be many, many more of these to come. So I'm not worried about a couple slide misses here and there. Debbie, this is what I'd like to do. Um, I wanna turn this thing over to you. You're gonna uh, you know, do the bulk of the content today because you're the expert on overcoming objections. You know, you've done 80,000 coaching calls. We could go on and on about how qualified you are. Uh, I'm gonna turn it over to you. I'm mostly gonna get out of the way. Some of these people that have been on here before know I have a really big mouth, so I have a hard time keeping it shut. <laughs> so I may jump in here and throw in some commentary now and then or, or pipe in with something that somebody typed in. When we get to the area later where we're gonna try to stump the coach, I'll definitely come in and, and throw you some of the better objections or maybe some of the more common ones we hear in here. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna slide to the side. 
you uh, step in and, and take the driver's seat and I promise I won't go anywhere and I probably won't be able to keep my mouth shut for long. Have at it, Debbie. All right, you go right ahead. And so guys, I wanna let you know, this is totally unrehearsed. We did put a few slides together to keep us on track. But, you know, Bob asked me, can you just be organic? Can you just let them hit you with anything they want to hit you with? Well, in my career, I closed over 3,000 transactions. I think Ben with his teams have closed over 7,000. And after 20 years of coaching and hearing it all, I guess I better be able to handle it. So we'll see. We're going to do Stump the Coach. But we also have some free gifts for you. We're going to send you, and you don't need to do a thing, um, to access these gifts, a copy of some commission objection handlers, because I know that's always a popular one. I'll share one of those with you today. And people always say, can I have a copy of the recording? Today, I, I feel it will be especially important to get that recording to you because this is going to be so organic and we're just going to, you know, hit me with your best shot. You may find great things here, I hope, that you'll want to listen to again and again. Now, I want to put this slide up, but I will put it up at the end, and I consider this another free gift. So one of the things that Ben asked me to do, he said, Debbie, when you do the webinar today, obviously we want this to be very content rich. We definitely don't want it to be a pitch or commercial all about coaching and how our coaching works and what we're bringing to the table. So instead, we wanted just to do a very easy thing here for you today. If as you listen to me, and of course, many of you know Ben, you think, you know, it might be time for me to hire a coach, but I need more information. We have a very low pressure, stress-free way to get acquainted, to talk to one of my coaching advisors, super easy. I'll put this link up at the end, but if you need to leave and you want to jot it down now, you can, www.businessstrategycall.com completely free, no pressure, just a fabulous person on my team to answer your questions. So let's move on. Why is this topic so important? Because you know, when you are confident that you can handle any objection, wouldn't you guys agree you're just naturally more confident in every sales situation? So just imagine if there was not a thing under the sun that a for sale by owner or expired could say to you that you couldn't magically come up with the most perfect response for, you'd call them all day long, right? Because it'd be fun. You know, there's just nothing they can stump you with. Now, when I got into the real estate business, here's what I was told. This was kind of a typical thing. And Bob, you probably have heard this too. An objection is simply a question in the mind of the prospect. Well, that's true. It very much could be a question in the mind of a prospect. However, it also could be something else. It could be that they're just attempting to rattle you. Or it might even be that they're just venting thoughts that are on the top of their mind. Or it could be a legitimate condition, right? So I'll give you guys an example. Let's say you're showing a buyer a house and you feel like, wow, I found their dream house for them. And you're showing them the home and they go, hmm, master bedroom's a little bit small. Oh my gosh, they're not gonna buy the house. Oh my gosh, master bedroom's too small. And you start jumping in to handle that. And really all they were doing is just venting thoughts on the top of their mind. It really wasn't a big deal. Or you might go out with some tough for sale by owner and they say, I don't think real estate agents are worth the money. Why are you worth the money? I'm not willing to pay a full commission. That Well, they're attempting to rattle you, right? So it could be a number of things. No matter what though, here's what I would encourage. Be calm, right? Learn What's that song, learn to be still? Have you ever noticed that when someone hits you with an objection, almost what happens is your, your heart rate goes up. You, you get that adrenaline surge, you get a little bit nervous, sometimes even annoyed because it's maybe even offensive what you feel they're saying or asking. I have learned this technique a long time ago. I teach it to our coaching clients. It's very easy. I think just visualize flatline on a heart monitor. Just take that down, just think, okay, I'm just gonna be calm. 
uh, you know, maybe it's a little bit like Superman, you know, the bullets are bouncing off of me. I'm just calm and I'm just going to take a breath and I'm going to handle this logically. And yet that's not what many times agents will do. They get nervous, they get agitated, they show their irritation, they flinch, they squirm, and maybe even argue with the client, which of course is never a good thing. So tell yourself, I just need to learn to be calm. Now, when you're calm, we want to stay in rapport. Staying in rapport is super critical. Of all of the ways people are persuaded, and I love reading books. Some of you may have read books by Robert Cialdini. He's kind of like the godfather of neuroscience. And Robert Cialdini says in the six ways people are persuaded, the number one is liking. But that doesn't mean they have to be your friend. That just means you have rapport. So I want to stay in rapport. So they throw a tough objection at you. You take a breath, you calm yourself, and you say, you know, that's a great question. I'm so glad you brought that up, or I'm so glad you asked me. Because even as you say that, number one, it buys you a little bit of extra time, right? But also, it helps calm you, and it also helps you stay in rapport. Now, this is a terrific line in neuropersuasion. If I were you, I would feel exactly the same way you do. So let's say Bob says to me, you know, I don't want to pay commission. I don't think agents are worth it. I've had bad experience in my past and yeah, I'm, I just, I just don't, I don't see the need. Well, you know, it's a great point. I'm glad you brought that up. And you know, Bob, if I were you, I'd feel exactly the same way you do. Now, here's the thing, guys. I'm not saying he's right. I'm not even saying I agree. I'm just saying if I were you, I'd feel the way you do because he is him and that is how he feels. So true statement, right? But it's just classic neuropersuasion to just calm things down, to stay in rapport. Because one of the things they want to do sometimes is pick a fight with you. Well, we don't want to let that happen. So I want to teach you a very simple pattern. And we're going to move through this quickly and get into the stump, the coach. First of all, mirror and match. You know, mirror and match their rate of speech. Mirror and match their tonality. Some of you have been taught this over the years. People naturally gravitate to people who they feel get them. So if you are a fast talker and they're a slow talker, they're going to feel anxiety. If you're a slow talker and they're a fast talker, they're going to get annoyed that you're not speaking quickly enough. So mirror and match. Acknowledge and approve. So if, if they say something that you don't approve of, you wouldn't approve. You might just say, interesting. Oh, wow. I understand or I can appreciate that. So acknowledge and approve and sprinkle that into the conversation People like to be acknowledged and they like approval. Next, I'm having trouble with my slide here. Maintain eye contact. So obviously this is if you're in person with them, but here's what I've noticed. In fact, I'll tell a little story on my husband. Going back, my husband's full-time sales uh, real estate agent in Orange County, California, 37 years in the business. When he first got into the business, I did this crazy thing where I would videotape him doing a mock presentation and I would hit him with objections. And what I noticed is whenever he'd get hit with an objection, he would look down. He would look down at the papers in front of him and he would fidget with the papers as he would answer. Well, guess what? That makes him look nervous or even shifty, right? So maintain eye contact repeat back a little bit of what they've said. So if I said, well, Bob, you know what? I'm, I'm so glad you brought this up. Gosh, it sounds like you've had a bad experience. If I were you, I'd feel exactly the way you do. So you're saying you, you aren't seeing the value in paying commission and you need to know more. Well, that's great. I'm happy to answer that. So Bob, may I ask you, so see, before I jump to answer or hit him, so to speak, with my best shot, I want to ask a clarifying question. 
and maybe another and maybe another. I may go three to five questions deep before I actually handle the objection. Because you see, here's the reason. I make sure I'm answering the objection that I believe he's asking appropriately. But again, also, this whole little pattern gives you a chance to catch your breath, gives you a few valuable seconds to get your mind around what they're saying so that you just don't jump to answer. And again, when you ask those clarifying questions, you ensure you're addressing the right issue. And when you ask clarifying questions, it may also help them realize what you want them to realize. So there's a great book, and I actually saw it on Ben's shelf um, just a few minutes ago because I'm here in Bellingham with Ben today. And I would recommend this to you guys. It's called The Seven, like the number seven, but so big seven on there, The Seven Powers of Questions by Dorothy Leeds, L-E-E-D-S. So in that book, she talks about different types of questions, how to be phenomenal at asking questions, not just gathering information, but gently leading people to self-realize what you want them to realize. And truly, it is an art. So I would encourage you guys to check out that book. Now then, you can handle the objection and attempt to close. And if that doesn't work and you get another objection, you may have to repeat that pattern as needed. Remembering, though, always starting with being extremely calm. And here's what sometimes happens. When you're feeling pressure and a little bit of anxiety and you've got to handle that objection or now it's time to move to the close, nine times out of ten, if you're not careful, you'll start talking faster. And remember, persuasion doesn't occur easily when you do that. In fact, when you are speaking at the same pace as that seller or buyer, and now suddenly you're telling them they need to hurry up and do this or they're not going to get the house, you just broke rapport. I, I try to visualize it like literally like breaking a bone. I just broke rapport. But also, the more intense the moment gets, the, the more you're working to close that prospect, the calmer and the quieter you should be. So some of you have met Ben in person. I always tease that there was this old movie years ago my dad used to watch, and it, it, this guy on there is like, walk softly and carry a big stick. You guys have heard that, or talk softly and carry a big stick or whatever. You, you, you know what I mean though, right? So calm down, slow down. Anxiety and tension will increase when you talk faster. And listen very carefully and read between the lines. What's fascinating to me is in all my years in real estate, we are definitely much more in an era now where they try to hide their motivation. And, and I think that they do it because they think that if we know how motivated they are, it's going to make us it easier for us to sell them. So how many times have you guys heard this? I don't have to sell, you know. I can just keep the house, right? How many times have we heard that? Or as I think Bob has some on his uh, dashboard that we'll do later, you know, I'm not in any hurry. I don't have to buy a house right away. Then you gotta ask yourself, then why are they going through this painful process? Why are you there at the table with them? What's the real story behind the story? So listen carefully and read between the lines. Now, I always encourage our coaching clients, while there's lots of objections out there in the world, really, there's going to be typically three to five, three to five for sellers, three to five for buyers, that in your marketplace or any given market time set of conditions in the market, they're probably the three to five that you're most commonly um, running into. Master those first right? Then you can go on and master the rest. Now, I did something last night. I sat down and you guys can, you know, try this at home. I sat down and I thought, okay, if I look at all of the typical buyer and seller objections, how many really are there? 
And you know what? I came up with about 12 for each. So some of you have kids in, you know, in school, maybe in college. Just imagine if they came home and said, hey, mom, hey, dad, there are these 24 things that I have to learn at least one great answer for. And I have to do that to graduate. What would you say? You'd say, get some flashcards and start practicing, right? Okay, so let's go and do the same. All right, so Bob, I think we now are at the point of talking about some of these objections because we want to stay, uh, save a good let's portion do it. of our time, right? So, so Bob, why don't you go ahead? Yeah. You just, you know, be the buyer. And guys, here's what I have to do. Okay, if you were sitting here with me now, I got to get in the zone here, block out all the noise, what's going on outside, forget about all of you. And I just need to focus on Bob. So Bob, go ahead and be my buyer. But set me up a bit, Bob. Where have I met you? So let's say that uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a lead from your website, Debbie. And, um, you know, and this could be, I, I think, like when we talk about these, sometimes a lot of our users, like a lot of Brevity clients today are probably seeing some of these um, objections via text where it's even easier to deal with them if you know what to say, right? But let's say that I'm a, I'm a buyer. I registered on your website. I was looking at a couple of properties on, on your website and you're making that first call to me. Um, and, and when you say, you know, what are you doing on the website? Are you looking to, to buy, sell and invest? Tell me a little bit about it. And I just said, you know what, Debbie? we're not really serious right now. We're, we're really just looking around. Well, so Bob, that's great. I'm glad you were able to use our resources just to get some ideas. You know, I'm just curious, have you guys been looking around long or is this really just kind of your first adventure? Yeah, we're just kind of just getting started. Um, you know, so we don't really even know exactly where we want to live, but we're, so we're just kind of getting a feel for the market. Well, then I want to congratulate you for taking the time to do your research. I think that's very important. And in fact, I encourage my buyers to take their time. So maybe in just a couple of minutes that we might have together today, I might be able to send you in a direction that would be helpful or direct you to an area you might want to do some more online research in. And if I do yeah, that, for you, maybe you'll remember me and maybe call me when you're ready. Is that fair enough? Yeah, that's that sounds good. Where, where would that be? Well, so let me ask you this. Um, tell me a little bit about areas you're interested in and price point. Because by the way, Bob, I work with a team and we're very dominant in this local market. I might even be able to tell you about some coming soon off market stuff that you could cruise by if you chose to. So where would you like to be? I mean, I think you took me at that point from just, look, I mean, really like somebody like that, there's not a script that's gonna turn them into a buyer tomorrow, right, Debbie? Like you're basically just trying to, to start that rapport with them, which well, essentially you did there already. Yes, exactly. And so here's the thing, a couple thoughts blew through my mind. I don't know if any of you here on, on the webinar fish, okay? But I remember when I was a little kid and my dad would take me fishing, which I don't go fishing anymore, but he took me fishing and put the worm on the hook and I would throw it in the water and the fish would start to nibble and, and I would yank it, right? And it would just fly right back at me and the fish did not get a chance to bite. So my dad used to say, you don't do that. Let them bite on the bait before you try to reel them in. So if you notice initially, by the way, guys, most of you are familiar with the disc. I am a 99D. I want to just grind that heck out of Bob and close him. But my approach is like the fish. I'm just dangling the bait. Well, sure, you're not serious. No problem. Oh, good for you. You're going to take your time. Hey, that's the smart thing to do. Well, maybe I can give you a little bit of like off market stuff or a little guidance. You can just go on little birdie and fly and do your own thing. And hey, but I always think I have to say, because he'd be suspicious, what's in it for me? And you see what's in it for me would be that if I help you, maybe when you're actually ready, 
you'll come back to me. Now, guys, I'm not buying his story that he's not serious. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't. I'm just trying right now to get him to relax and talk to me. Because if I can't get him to relax and talk to me, then I'm not gonna get any more information out of him to determine is he a real buyer today or not. Because when you guys go shopping, like if you went to department store today, let's say you're there, you gotta buy a pair of shoes because you got a super important listing appointment and you, you gotta have them. You walk into the department store, you say, salesperson says, can I help you? What do we all say? No, I'm just looking. Well, that's a lie. Every single time. Right? <laughs> and, and it's not that we're a liar. Yeah. We don't mean to be. It's just our reflex no. So I'm going to assume that Bob is giving me that reflex, you know, hand up. No, 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 no. I'm just not serious. No problem. So I want to get him to put his hand down. Well, Debbie, you know, we're actually wanting to be really... Um, you know, in the Fairhaven area, and we like it. It's kind of historic. It's charming. And, oh, really, where do you live now? Well, we're renting just outside of that, but that's really where we want to be. Oh, perfect. Now, tell me, you know, what's the price point you want to be in? Maybe I can send you by a couple things. And then I love questions for buyers like this. You know, your ideal time frame. When would you like to actually be moving into a new house? What's important about that time frame? See, very conversational. Lots of acknowledging and approving. Oh my gosh, that's a perfect idea. Oh, that area is awesome. Hey, Bob, I got an idea. Here's an idea. I mean, you seem like a really nice guy. Hopefully you can tell I'm pretty cool too and not high pressure at all. Why don't we get together for a few minutes? You know, I, I, my office is, is right near the area where you want to be. Why don't you come in? I'll pull a couple of sample properties together, show you some things online, get you guys off to a good start, set you up on a good search, and let's go see a couple together. You can tell me what you like, what you don't like. That way, as you're getting educated and I send you these searches, see, now I'm going to know what you really want, so I won't waste your time. Now, you guys might be saying, but wait a minute, you don't know if he's pre-approved, he hasn't talked to a lender. Yeah, right now, I don't care. I'm just going to see if he'll take the bait. So if he takes the bait, and now he's going to come into my office, all right, now I'm going to go a little deeper with the questions. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask if he would like to speak to a terrific lender that specializes in working with buyers like him. Now I can take it a little further. First step, though, is get him to bite on the bait. Does that kind of make sense, Bob? Absolutely. Can I ask you a question? Do you, like this is, you basically just laid out the framework that Ben's teams use. And for all I know, Ben got this from you and that's why his teams do this. But LP Mama, do you you know that kind of framework? I don't, I don't, but I wonder okay, if it's so just like just this sales it. 101, right? <laughs> it is, it is, right? So like location, price, motivation, agent, are they working with another agent, mortgage, and then appointment or transition. You kind of went, uh, LP Ma, which is you did location, price, motivation. So you talked about all those things, right? You, where do you want to live? Like what what price range? And you said something about you know what what has them thinking about moving or something, trying to get at their motivation. And then you kind of went for the appointment at that point, try to get them to the office. But so that's um, interesting. I wonder if Ben's teams have stumbled into this just based on you know the way that you've coached him prior to that. But yeah, that you essentially did LP Mama, which is you just started going through and trying to dig into each one of those little elements, which is location, price, motivation. Mortgage is another one that you talked about, and you said, I'll wait till I get to the appointment for that. But I mean, these are standard things that we have to, to know about this client before we're ever going to help them buy a house, right? And you just start digging in as soon as you can. Right. And I think the thing, the reason I go to motivation or, you know, their dream, let's call it that, right? Like their vision. The reason I go to that is when we ask questions about things that matter to people and they open up to you and you're interested and acknowledging and listening, they naturally feel more in rapport with you. But if I'm just saying, all right, well, here's the deal. You know, are you pre-approved or not? 
And and <laughs> how many things are that? Where's your money coming from? They're like, what, what are you trying to rule me out? Are you trying to infer I don't qualify? But instead, I'm thinking, what's the harm in taking two or three minutes first to get that vision, to get that motivation, to build that rapport? So I set the appointment. Now that they've made the commitment or decision to come and see me, now they're more likely to go to that next level and do what I suggest. You know, I want to do a great job for you, Bob, and only show you properties that are in your budget and not make you uncomfortable and put the best things in front of you. So let's talk about financing real quick for a moment. I know it's not the most fun part of shopping for a home, but I want you to have the best edge in negotiating and, and set a budget. So what kind of work have you done there so far? And would you be open to having a conversation with a top mortgage professional? Because, you know, you may want some time to really consider that opportunity. And, and sometimes people have items of credit that don't belong to them that have to be cleaned up. Let's get ahead of that. It's all part of this process. So just think fishing, guys, right? And we're going to reel them in. All right, All Debbie, right, so I had you start with that first. I had you start with that first one because that is a common thing that we hear on Ben's teams. Every single day we hear that one. I'm just just looking, just browsing. So this is another pretty common one that we hear. And um, I'll be honest, on our teams, we get this a lot via text message. Somebody reply to a text, but we could just as easily hear this when they walk into one of our open houses, right? That's a pretty common occurrence. People walk into our open house and they'll say, oh, I already have an agent. Um, but we, we run into this objection multiple times every single week. And so, um, let's say, uh, let's do this one as if I'm, I'm walking into your open house and, um, you know, you, you've, you've kind of introduced yourself or whatever. And, and you ask me about where I'm and I just am stone. I just want to be stone cold. Hey, you know, we already have an agent, Debbie. Um, thanks, but we're, we're just here without our agent kind of browsing through, but we already have an agent. Okay. Good for you. Um, why don't you go ahead and help yourself and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. So guys, I, I'm a fanatic about this one. So I'm glad we have this one here. Here's what often agents will do and it's exactly what they're thinking you'll do. Okay, well, you know, screw this guy. I'm going to leave him alone because he's already got an agent. I'm not going to waste my time. That's what they think this will cause to happen and that's what they want to happen, that they get rid of you. The next thing that agents sometimes will do is say, oh, really? Well, who is your agent? And, and then they go down that route. Well, I, I'm just hearing blah, blah, blah. You know, the uh, old Charlie Brown cartoons with the kids are right. And so that's what I hear. Blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm thinking, OK, maybe they have an agent. Maybe they don't right now is not the time to address it. So again, I want to let them feel no pressure because I want them to lower their guard. I actually read years ago that when you say to people at open house, make yourself at home, they do actually calm a little. So I said, make yourself at home. Go ahead, take a look around. You know, I just said, go, okay, when they say I have an agent, okay, make yourself at home. And then I proceed to gracefully ask questions and again the whole same thing hey do you guys live in the neighborhood oh you don't where are you coming in from oh good for you and then I back off and then I ask another question and I back off so I'm gathering information I'm building rapport now what I do I'm just gonna tell you guys it worked for me I used to con convert like crazy from open house it was my favorite I just pretend they never said it so when they come through the house and now they're heading towards the door, and of course my body is strategically placed in front of the door some way in the path, and I just go about picking them up. You know, I, I work really hard for a very few buyers at a time, and I know about off markets and coming soon, and I prospect for them, and hey, you guys seem like cool people. I'd love to help. So, you know, tell me, would, could we get together? You know, I'm going to go in for their information, for the appointment. And here's what happens. If they like me, if I've broken through, the agent thing never comes up again if they don't actually have one. Now, if they actually have one, they may say, oh, well, no, 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 thank you. We have an agent. 
Oh, yeah, that's right. You mentioned that. Hey, may I ask a question? Do you have a contract, a buyer broker contract with that agent that obligates you to work exclusively with them? Because obviously, if they do, I need to respect that, but typically they don't. Oh, no, 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 we don't have any kind of contract. No, no, not at all. Okay, well, that's good. Then your options are still open to consider the agent that might be best for you. May I ask you, are you open to considering another opportunity? Are you 100% satisfied with what the agent's doing for you? Well, yeah, we're, you know, we're good. It's fine. It's all good. Okay. Hey, I might know them. Who are they? I'll let them know you stop by because now I want to zero in to who are they and where do they work? Oh, no, you wouldn't know them. You wouldn't know them because they're part time. They're our family friend and they're two hours away from here. Ah, bingo. Right now I can go at it a different way. Oh, wow. Well, I can understand why you'd want to support a friend. How's that working out for you, though? We're pretty aggressive market here. And not only are they not full time, but they're not local. Has that has that been a challenge at all? Well, yeah, it's kind of annoying, actually. So I'm going to go after picking them up. Right, guys, because nobody owns that buyer. There is no buyer broker agreement. And I'm going to be respectful. And if I had to, would I offer to pay that person a referral fee to pick this buyer up? Maybe, maybe, you know, just depends on how bad I want them. And if I feel that makes sense, but I end where most agents would begin. Oh, who are they? That's my ending. Because at first, I just want to, yeah, I just want to try to see if that's even real and can I get them? And you, you took that, you, you didn't put them on the defensive right away, right? Because if they were lying and you're like, what's their agent's name? Then all of a sudden they're, they're skating and they're on the defensive and that rapport yeah. is broken like right away there. Exactly. Okay. All so right, you so this one probably came in, Debbie, this one came in, I bet it, uh, 50 times that we have a bunch of people out here. Like what I said earlier, hey, what was the last objection you heard? This one was all over the place. Um, so I, I guess I'll set you up like this. Let, let you, you were at... I came and did a listing or you came and did a listing appointment in my house. You've, you've run through the listing appointment and um, you know, we're, we're kind of at that point now where, where we get down to price. And I basically would say something to the effect of, Hey, listen, before we even get into this, the, the, what we would list this thing at, or, you know, it, it seemed like the plan that you guys laid out was, was pretty good. Um, but here's the reality, Debbie, we don't want to pay a full commission. Okay, so you don't want to pay a full commission, and you know what, Bob? I mean, if I were you, I'd, I'd be asking the same question. I'd feel exactly the same way. See, again, remember, guys, I want to go to that pattern of rapport because right now you're going, oh, my God, they're going to not pay me. You know, you start getting all worried about it. Um, so, Bob, may I ask a question? So is it the amount of the commission or are we just really very concerned about making sure that you squeeze every dollar out of this property pot at possible is that is that really a big issue here just talk to me a little bit about that so i, I guess one of you know we've seen some commercials there's this place called um i think it's um bluefin or something red red dog or something they they uh they'll list your house for I think it's uh, one or two percent, and uh, so I just I I know you know the last time we sold our house I think we paid six percent, and I just I know there's some other options out there for us, and so yeah at the end of the day we just want to get as much money out of here as as possible because we're going to be using this on the down payment on our next house. Sure, yeah, I, and I again I, that makes total sense to me. So let's do this. If I have your permission, I'll try to break it down for you at the best that I can so you two can really make a decision of which path is better because there really are two paths one is to go with a discount cut rate and by the way guys I say cut rate cut rate right a discount cut rate option or to go with a full service real estate professional like myself so if I may share with you just 
a little bit about the side by side comparison of that. You know, so for sure. an example, if you were to meet with a cut rate company, they will not share with you all of the things that they will not do to market the home. And unfortunately then, what could potentially happen is you don't receive the exposure to the proper type of buyer, and therefore you don't receive the type of offers that would allow you to net the most money. And let me see if I can explain it another way. You know, Bob, when you look around in your community, what you'll notice is most sellers list with a professional real estate brand and agent. In fact, it's only about 20% or less of the market that lists with the cut rate company. So you'd have to you know, logically say, if it worked great and everybody was happy, everybody would list with those guys. They don't though. And in fact, what usually happens is I end up taking listings where they were listed with that type of cut rate operation and had a horrible experience and came to me. So it's kind of that old saying, you know, you get what you pay for. Um, but here's another thought too. You know, you would think, hmm, if they're really a strong, powerful agent, why would they work at that kind of company? Wouldn't they want to do a better job for their sellers? Wouldn't they want to earn more? So you sort of wonder, hmm, how experienced are they? What services do they bring to the table? And, and who knows? Maybe they're really good, but, you know, just something to consider. And, and Bob, it sounds like you've met with one of them, so I'm just wondering, when you got together with them, did you have to grind to get them to accept that they would, you know, do a cut, or did they just volunteer? Kind of, how did that work? No, that 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 was what they offered right right away. I mean, that's kind of their their deal. Okay. So I guess another way to look at this would be if if they just give up the money that they feed their own family with, do you think they're going to fight hard for yours? Right? It doesn't sort of show you they're not a super strong negotiator. Is the only thing they have to put on the table is a cheaper price. Hmm. But one last thing, Bob, and you're a very practical businessman. Um, you know, this is not your first rodeo, so to speak, right? You guys have bought and sold many homes. As you already know, when you hire me today and you do the right thing and choose a full service professional with everything that goes with that, the great news is you're not writing a check today. You're not giving me a single dime. In fact, if you think about it, all you're really doing is dangling a marketing carrot. It's just, you know, hey, Deb, you go out there, you do a great job, you get offers on the table that we're excited about, we choose to accept those offers, and then based on that, you get the deal closed for us, and those can be tough, but Deb, you get that closed, then you'll get paid. So really, I'm taking all the risk. I have to provide the service, do the job. You're still this in, you're in charge, you're the boss. As the seller, you're not gonna sign any offer that doesn't net you what you choose to net. So might as well hire the best, have what you need, and you know, you're only gonna pay me if I do the job. Right, okay, guys, I'm, you're I, hired. Yeah, because what I find guys is sometimes that they get all caught up in they got to win this battle right now. And then we, we need to shift them over to thinking, wait a minute, nobody's getting any money today. Nobody's getting any money. If she doesn't perform, and certainly some of you may say, well, I tell them, you know, my listing commission is X. And then together, we can make a decision on what you're willing to pay a buyer agent. And I like that one too, because now that kind of helps them feel that they have they're in charge of that and also it separates the math so they realize you're not making so much money um, 
what I do realize when it comes to commission, they don't care about us. Well, gee, I can't really afford to do all this stuff. I don't care what you can afford, right? They don't care. But, you know, I got to support my family. I don't care. You got to support your family. Well, my broker won't let me. I don't care what your broker has to say. See, some of that old stuff, guys, it's just not going to work. It's got to be how will them, how will, if they choose a cut rate, flat rate company, how will that impact their bottom line in a negative way? Now, also, I would encourage you guys to, to collect your reviews and testimonials. Of course, you all know that. But when you're collecting those reviews and testimonials, Stack this deck in your favor by getting your, your sellers to talk about how you got them more money, how you were worth every penny, how their home was listed with this cut rate company and it failed. It was horrible. And you came in, saved the day, and boy, you were worth it. Like you, you need to get them to say more than just that you're nice or you provide good service. You know, monitor your statistics, list price to sales price if they're super strong. Share with them how you net them more. And exposure is a given. You know, it's going to be on the Internet. It's going to be, you know, everywhere out there. So what they want to feel, though, is you're the champion of their value. And you're going to identify that buyer, that, that perfect buyer that will pay the highest realistic price. They want you to fight for them. And of course, we can use examples like, you know, gee, Bob, I mean, you kind of got to look at it this way. If, if you need a brain surgery today, you're not going to get the cheapest doctor. You're going to want the one that has the most surviving patients. Well, I'm that doctor, Bob. Right. But again, guys, we can't come across so gimmicky and pitchy. Engage with them. Discuss with them. Reason it together with them. And you notice I said, you know, Bob, you're a great businessman. I, I know you've already realized this. I'm sure I'm not telling you anything you haven't already thought about. What's he going to say? No, I'm dumb. I don't know that. He's going to go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I already know about that. I already realized that, right? That's just kind of neuropersuasion stuff, which, by the way, Bob is built into all of my scripts, which now will be all available to our forward coaching clients. So. OK, so I know I'm watching the time here. Um, we still need to interview two other agents before we make a decision. I'm going to back this one up and, and say I strongly suggest when you're booking your appointment, you find out if they're interviewing. And even if it feels awkward to ask that because they're a good friend or family member or past client, just ask it in a different way. Hey, Bob, we've worked together multiple times in the past. Now, you're not talking to anyone else, right? See, I want to know what's happening. And I want to position myself in that lineup. Oh, nine times out of ten, better to be last. You know, we actually have some scripts on how to encourage them not to sign before you get there. But let's pretend that I've done this full presentation and I'm trying to get Bob to sign. And now they pop up with, oh, well, we still need to interview two other agents before we make a decision. And you're thinking, what the heck? Remember, flatline. Hmm, Bob, that's interesting. You know, most of the people I meet with, after they see all the terrific things I'll do for them, they really pretty much naturally hire me. So the fact that you're hesitating, feel you need to talk to others, I wonder if I've left something unanswered for you. And I wanna do a good job here for you today. So before I leave, may I ask you, right now here's the magic in this. Before I leave, See, I ain't given up yet. I'm a long ways from giving up. However, what Bob just heard is, okay, good. She gets it. I, I, I want her to go, right? I don't want any pressure here. Now he can relax because she gets it. So before I leave, may I ask you, 
just a couple more questions. You know, is, is there anything that isn't answered, isn't clear, that you're still worried about, that I can answer for you before you go? Okay, so Bob, you take it from there. Say whatever you want to say. Hello, Bob. I think we lost Bob. Okay, so let's pretend that Bob said, oops, did I lose you? You did, but now I'm here with you. Oh, okay. I just decided to come over to Debbie's <laughs> office. My internet kicked me off here, so she's up here visiting us in Bellingham today. I was going to just pretend to beat you. <laughs> All right, so so Bob, so I've, I've already said, did you hear the part? Did I get you set up or did you run over here? So, I ran over here. Okay, good. So I'm going to say, well, Bob, you know, the fact that most people typically hire me at this point um, tells me that there must be some unanswered question that would make you feel you still need to interview. So before I go and, and let you guys get on with your evening, may I ask, what is it that's stopping us from moving forward today? Well, so here's the deal. We've got um, two other agents and one of them, I, you know, it doesn't matter, but the, the one guy is, is, He's at our church and I just, we felt like we had to give him at least a chance. And so we we're a little bit hesitant to, to sign with you because then we'd have to call this guy and you know, it was just off to see him every Sunday at church. I just, so we've got some other, couple other agents, one in particular that's really, you know, it's kind of weighing on me. Well, I understand. And I think that that's something that often comes up and yet that's why there's kind of that old adage about working with friends and family. Because something to think about, Bob, probably you've already thought of this. If you were to meet with him and you really don't like what they have to offer, then how do you say no, yeah. right? I didn't even think about that. <laughs> and then also, let's say you do hire him because you feel obligated and it's not going well, will you feel comfortable firing him? Yeah, probably no. <laughs> I know, it's tough though, I, I totally get it. In fact, what some of my clients tell me is that they tell, friends, family, that type of situation. They say, you know, we like to keep business, business, and personal, personal, because our friendship is so much more important to us than business. So we felt we needed to hire a neutral professional. I'm sure you'll understand. And if they're your good friend, I'm sure they will. Now, there's one other thing to look at here, and that is that, well, let me put that aside. Let me ask you this. And please feel free to be direct because this is your life. This is important. Do you feel comfortable and confident that I can get the home sold for you and do a good job at that? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. So if we look at the fact that that part is kind of a done deal, we know we could work well together. So if you bring other agents in and interview them just because you feel you set that appointment, what's going to end up happening is when you don't choose them, they will get mad. Because see, then they've wasted their time to come. Time they could have had dinner with their family or gone and relaxed or go see another client, which means then they're not going to work with us to bring buyers to your listing. What would be better for you and for them, we go ahead and sign the listing today. And as your agent acting on your behalf, I will very graciously call them tell them you did not want to waste their time, that you selected me, but that we want to work with them and give them the first opportunity to bring their quality buyers to the table and get half the commission. So we'll treat them special. We'll give them an advanced opportunity because I'm sure they're nice. That's why you're meeting with them. Now we've got the best of everything. You have me to help you. And then we have them on our team and they still get money. Wait, so you'll call them for me? I don't have to do it? Oh, that'd be fantastic. Great. So that's kind of always kind of my go-to, guys, is helping them see if they really don't want you or don't like something you presented. They may insist on those interviews. But sometimes where people get stuck because they just don't know how to get themselves out of that situation, especially a higher S personality, right? Really sweet person. Oh, I hurt their feelings. Oh, my goodness. But they won't be able to have dinner with their family and they're going to spend all that time and then they're not going to want to show your house because they're going to be mad let's just get them on their our team and and now you've got everybody and they get money they can bring their buyers oh yeah that's great give them a call 
Now, you know what we should say though too, clearly, does this work 100% of the time? Of course not, right guys, we know that. But when you practice and you rehearse and you are good at it, um, we take in the coaching, we can take people from 40, 50% listing taken ratio to more than 90%. And I always say, let's set a goal. 98.2% closing ratio because there's always going to be that 0.8 that are just nuts. You don't want them, right? But the rest of them, we want them. So I know we're running out of time. Here, right? let's, let's, let's go to stump the coach. Can okay. we just, because yep, there was a that. couple good ones here. And I think ones that people hear a lot. In fact, it wasn't a week ago, I saw this as a response on a text message from one of our auto campaigns in Brevity where um, it was a Zillow lead that had come in and the text had gone out and said, Hey, I'm the preferred agent with Zillow. Did you have any questions about this listing? And the guy, the response from the, the lead, the prospect was, are you the listing agent? I just want to talk to the listing agent. And one of the questions that somebody asked earlier to stump the coach was, Hey, people will come into these open houses and they'll say, I just want to deal with the listing agent. This must be an agent that maybe holds opens for a, a different person in the, in the company okay. or something. Right. So th that one, right. Like, I, I don't want to talk. Are you the listing agent? I just want to deal with the listing agent. I think there's this assumption that they think they're going to get a better deal. Maybe if they go right to the listing agent, I'm guessing well, that's that the is root part of, it. of the objection handling. It's figuring out what is that limiting belief underneath there. Okay. And I would just be very direct. Abs uh, no, I'm, I'm not the listing agent. Uh, however, I'd be delighted to help you with whatever you need in the meantime. You know, may I ask, I'm just curious, what's important for you about only working with a listing agent, just so I understand? Well, you know, I'm a pretty good negotiator, so a lot of times I can get them to give up some information about, about the sellers that uh, maybe I wouldn't have gotten otherwise by dealing directly with that listing agent. Okay, and, and so here's where I'm gonna go with this. I'm probably not going to try to handle that immediately right now, standing at the front door. Oh, okay, well, I understand. You know, if I were you, I'd maybe have that same thought too. Well, why don't you do this? You're here. Go ahead and take a look at the house and let me answer some questions for you. Because, see, right now he's just being combative, trying to rattle me, right? We're standing there at the front door. I can go back and forth like a ping pong ball with him, and I'm not going to win. I just need to kind of deflect it, diffuse it, let him look at the house, do my thing, build rapport show my market expertise, answer questions, maybe his guard will come down, and then I'm just gonna try to pick him up. Now, if he circles back to that, but I only wanna work with a listing agent, you know, if I were not in real estate, I would probably think that same thing, and yet, here's a reality of that, and I would go into having an advocate on your side and someone doing the research and out there hunting properties, but see, I'm not going to just come back with some witty thing because that's just going to shut him down, right? So, so guys, we've got to think, okay, they're either thinking that they're going to grind this listing agent and get money back. And if they are a true grinder, they may not be your ideal client. They may be that 0.8, right? Or they're just thinking, well, it's what they're supposed to do. And then they fall in love with you because you're so smart and professional. Now they're willing to bite on the bait of at least giving you an opportunity, right? We're not gonna win them all. I read something the other day, in fact, it said 70% of people who meet or see a professional that has value will pay more and 30% won't. So there are gonna be some we won't get. Right? So my slides are not clicking. Oh, that that's me. Yeah, clicking? Um, yeah. Okay, that's okay. All right, so guys, selling is an art. And I would just encourage you, consider it that. Never consider you're done. Always be looking for that next level of mastery because what would it look like, right, if they had complete mastery of their scripts and skills? And now, Bob, I'm happy to stay on for more stuff, the coach, but for those who may have to go because I know we're getting close to the, the top, I want to put up there for you guys that slide really quick, which I'm it's not clicking. Sorry, but there you go. All right, so if you decided, wow, this is good. I want to hang out in this neighborhood, learn how to do some of this and then some, 
remember it's very easy no pressure i'll put that up there for you guys and then we'll stay on with you if you'd like www.businessstrategycall.com and here's what's going to happen a very gracious customer relations manager from my team will reach out they'll find out what you'd like to know what you need help with and we'll get you connected with one of our quality coaches or business consultants or even me if i have time in my schedule all right so we'll leave that there for them and then i'm happy to stay while we let them go off if they need to and answer others so do we have some more all right um yeah let's just let's just fire in here and um natalie says i i i can't afford to pay an agent and then maybe that's a similar to to re reducing the commission and we talked about that earlier right like the the upfront or you, you know no money's coming out of your pocket today um actually i got one that i saw that i scrolled over earlier okay. um how many houses have you sold in my neighborhood and i think you probably come across this right where maybe you've sold none exactly <laughs> so that's a really good one so i can't remember it is a good that. one and so guys this could work whether you're new in the business or you just are new to that particular neighborhood i would always say if you don't have tr uh, track record or track record in that area you just need to assume this one's going to come up now it may not come up but whenever you're not ready for it it comes up okay and and the step one would be really hone your market expertise know that market because when you know that market and you can speak to it whether it's a buyer or a seller and you've got a quality presentation they might not even bring it up but if they do lean on the power of your brand lean on the power of your team or your company or office or market center use their stats well we have this percent market share we have sold this many homes well what's it if they pin you down though and they say no 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 but bob what about you you know what guys own it see if you squirm if you fidget if you seem nervous it seems bad instead just say you know what actually none and that's exactly why you're going to want to hire me because you see i have determined that i want to dominate this market because of that i am going to work overtime you're going to get the benefit of all of my attention and I have a lot to prove in this neighborhood. So that's gonna be a good thing for you. So that's why you should choose me. So you just own it. If you own it, you know, as a top agent, there were times when I would lose a listing to a new person because they would say, you know what, they have more time for me. Or I think they're gonna be hungrier. So Barbara Cochran wrote a book, I read it years ago, called If You Don't Have Big Breasts, Wear Ribbons in Your Pigtails. The subtitle was use what you've got. So use what you've got. I mean, yeah, if, if, if you if you weren't a brand new agent, but you you'd done something impressive in a in a neighboring town, in a neighboring community, sure. I mean you'd be you'd be leveraging that, right? Well, I, I, mean, I haven't sold any here, but I sold 75% of the homes exactly. in that in that town next door. So I certainly have experience or I I work your feeder markets. So you see, I'm moving buyers from the lower Priced areas into your area. I'm your buyer supplier. That's exactly why you should choose me. All right, here's the deal, guys. We're, we're just past the top of the hour. Um, ben is now staring in our window because Debbie's here from out of town and, and uh, meeting with Ben. I think he wants us to go. So you guys get back to work. Um, listen, if you've never had a coach, then then absolutely just jump on the business strategy call.com and like and just get a feel for what ask some questions wonder about it um debbie's team is is amazing like it's no pressure but here's the deal people do not rise in any profession um without a coach right like you look at professional athletes obviously we all think about with coaches but like these guys continue to get coaching till the day they go into the hall of fame essentially right like ben kinney continues to get and he doesn't do real estate coaching anymore he does like biz, he gets business coaching still to this day and so um if you've never done it check check out businessstrategycall.com they'll give you a feel for what it's all about and and maybe it's maybe it's for you maybe it's that thing that takes you past what you've naturally been capable of i mean debbie we all have these ceilings that we hit in our business right if you find yourself against one of those ceilings it could be that a coach is that missing element to help you identify where you have more opportunity in your world and really hone in on that opportunity so businessstrategycall.com 
Thank Debbie, you guys. It was a pleasure. So gonna, we'll get this recording. Right? Yeah, we'll, we'll get the recording. Out. Uh, Debbie's going to be around here a bunch. I, I'm going to try to get her as often as I can to come talk to you guys. You guys have an awesome rest of your week. Debbie, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.